Hey everybody, this is Taha. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to implement select text to share tooltip, similar to this one. So when I select some text, this tooltip appears, and when you click on it, it opens up Twitter to send a new tweet. In this case, it contains the selected text and the URL of this page. So let's jump to the code to learn how to implement it. So in this project, I have some text for testing, and in the styling, I'm just centering the text, and I have some styling for the font family and size. For the first step, we need to add the tooltip. So let's add it in the body tag. Let's call it share tooltip. And inside of it, we're gonna add all the share buttons. In this case, I'm gonna have just one for Twitter. So let's call it share item, and it will also be called share on Twitter. You can display the Twitter icon here if you want, but I'm just gonna keep it simple and add the word tweet. Now let's style this element. So let's say share tooltip. First, I want the tooltip not to be part of the normal flow of the page. And I can do this by setting its position to absolute. And let's set the Z index to 10. And let's add some background color, some border radius, and some padding. And set the text color to white. Now let's style the share button itself. So let's say share item, set font size to 14 pixels, add some padding, and set the cursor to pointer. And also I want to change the background color when I hover over it. So let's say share item, hover, background color to this one. Now to make this look like a real tooltip, we need to display a small triangle below it. So let's add it in the after sudo element. So let's say share tooltip, after, the content would be empty, and it will be display block. In CSS, there's a trick to display a triangle, which is to set all borders of the element and only show the border color for the opposite side of where the triangle is pointing. So in this case, it should point down, so we will set all the border colors to transparent, except for the top border. So first, let's set the border. It will be five pixels and solid. And let's set the border color. We need it to point down, so we will only set the top border. So let's set this color, and the rest would be transparent. I need to display the triangle below the tooltip, so I'm gonna set its position to absolute. Now we need to fix its horizontal position to display it in the center. And we can do that by setting its left position to 50%. So if we say 50%, it will move to the center. However, you can see that it's not centered correctly. And that's because we moved its left edge to the half of the tooltip. So to fix it, I need to move it to the left by the same amount of its half width. So let's do that using transform. And we're gonna use translate x, negative 50%. Okay, so that works. Okay, so that's it for the CSS. Now we're gonna move to the JavaScript code. But before that, I need to show you the selection API. So the idea here is that when the user selects some text here, we need to get the coordinates of this selection and move the tooltip to that coordinates. So for example, we're gonna center it horizontally and display it above the selection. But to do that, we need to get its coordinates. And we can do that using the selection API. We can access it using window.getSelection. So this returns an object with some information about that selection. But the two important ones here are the is collapsed and range count. Is collapsed is a boolean that indicates whether there is a selection or not. So when it's true, then that means there's no selection. But if it's false, which is in this case, then that means there's a selection. And the range count shows the number of selections on the page. Now, Chrome only supports one selection. But in other browsers, for example, in Firefox, you can have multiple selections. So that means this selection object contains multiple selections. To access the one we want, we need to call the getRangeAt method. So if we say window.getSelection, get range at, and then specify its index. In this case, we will just get the first one, so we will use zero. Now this would return another object called range. What we need to do with this object is to get its coordinates. And we can do that by calling get bounding client rect. So if we say get bounding client rect, it will return this object. And here are the coordinates of this object. What we need here is the left, top, width, and height and we're gonna use these values to update the position of the tooltip. So now we understand the selection API, let's jump into code to implement it. But first, we need to detect when the user selects something. Unfortunately, there's no select event in the browser for the document element. 
However, we can use the mouse of event. This event is fired when the user releases the button of the mouse. So let's try this. First, let's get the tooltip. And let's add that event listener. Let's say document, add event listener, mouse up. Before writing the code to update the position of the tooltip, we need to check whether there's a selection or not. And remember, we can do that using selection is collapsed. So let's write an if statement for that. So let's say if selection is collapsed, then hide the tooltip. So we will say share tooltip, style, display, none. And then we will return from that function. Actually, we can test that now. So if we select something and there's selection, the tooltip will still be here. But if we deselect that, the tooltip will be removed. Okay, so that works. Next, let's get the coordinates of the selection. So let's say construct selection, get range at, let's get the first one and call get bounding client tracked. Next, let's show the tooltip. Let's say share tooltip, style, display, block. And now let's update its position. Let's start with the left position. Share tooltip, style, left equals, and it will be in pixels. So to center it horizontally in the selection, we need to set its left position to this position and then move it by the half width of the selection and then move it to the left by the half width of the tooltip to make it perfectly centered. So first, let's set its position to the rect left. Let's say rect left and then add half width of the rect and then move it to the left by the half width of the tooltip. Now let's test that. If I select something, it will be centered horizontally. Next, let's update its top position. And we will do that by setting its top to the same top as the selection, and then move it up by the same amount as the height of the tooltip because we want to display it above the selection. So let's do that here. Style, top. So it will be the same top as the rect. And let's move it above the selection. Share tooltip. Dot client height. Now let's test that. If I select something, it's positioned correctly. Another test, and it works. Now when we reload the page, this tooltip should initially be hidden. So let's do that by setting display to none for the share tooltip. So let's say display none. If I reload, it will be hidden initially, and then when I select something, it will show up. That works. However, there's an issue that I need to fix. And that happens when I deselect the text and the tooltip is still there. So if I click here, the tooltip doesn't disappear. This happens because the mouse up handler doesn't wait for the selection to update before running. But we can fix that by waiting for the next paint cycle. And to do that, we can use request animation frame. So if we wrap the handler code in this call back, it will fix it. So let's try this. Let's test that. If I click, it disappears. Yeah, so it works. So now showing and hiding the tooltip works as expected. Next, let's implement the share button. And in this case, we have the Twitter share button. So let's say share on Twitter. And let's grab that element by saying query selector, share on Twitter. Now we need to listen to the click event. So let's say share on Twitter, add event listener, click. Next, we need to get the selected text, and we can do that by calling to string on the selection object. So first, let's get the selection object, and let's store it in selected text. And let's see if it works by logging it. So if I select something, and I click tweet, I can see that it's logged, but without the selected text. And actually, this is expected. The click event listener is fired after the selection is deselected because see how the selection is deselected when I click on tweet. So the click event is called only after the selection is removed. So we need to use another event that is called after the click but before the selection is removed. And that's what mouse down is for. So if we replace it with mouse down, it will work. Let's test that. Okay, so that works. So now we have the selected text. Let's get the URL of the page. So let's say URL, and we can get that from location. So let's say window.location.toString. Finally, we need to open up Twitter in a new window, and we can do that using window.open. 
so window.omin and the URL would be this. For the URL parameter, I will pass URL. And for the text, I'm going to pass the selected text. The second parameter takes the target of the window. And in this case, it will be blank. And in the third parameter, we should specify the options for that window. First, it will be pop-up. And let's set the width and height to 600 pixels. So let's test this. If I select some text and I click Tweet, it opens up Twitter with the selected text and the URL of the page. Okay, so that's it. If you have any questions, please drop them in the comments section. I will see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.